this presentation is on confidence interval estimation. I am Pat Obi, Professor of Finance and Quantitative Methods at Purdue University Calumet. First off, we talked about population parameters, which are descriptors we use to characterize a population. For example, we have the population mean mu, which is a measure of central tendency, the population variance sigma squared, which is a measure of dispersion, also the population standard deviation sigma, another measure of dispersion, which actually it is the square root of uh, sigma squared of the variance. And then the population proportion p, which is a measure of the percentage of outcomes of interest in a population. Now though, because we do not often have access to all of the observations um, of interest, we work with samples. And therefore, in lieu of these population parameters, we have sample estimators. So the sample estimator for the population mean mu is x bar, which is the sample mean. And the sample estimator for the population variance sigma squared is actually s squared, which is a sample variance. And finally, the sample estimator of the population proportion p is p hat. So with these sample estimators, we calculate a point estimate, which is a single value, as I note here, that is used as an estimate of a population parameter. And so to explain precisely what I mean by that, Here's a spreadsheet containing monthly index data for the S&P 500 from 1990 to December 2012. And so what I've done here in this column is to calculate the monthly rates of returns. And based on this sample data of actually 275 observations, I calculate the sample mean. The sample mean here comes out to be 0.53%, and so this is the sample mean monthly return of the S&P 500. This 0.53% is referred to as a point estimate, while the sample mean x bar represents the estimator. Now, in the same way, uh, the sample variance here, S squared, comes out to be 0 0.0053. So this value right here is called the point estimate. And if we take the square root of that and um, apply the unit of measure percent, we, we find the sample standard deviation S. Now though, another thing I've done is to identify the number of positive returns in this sample. And so I kind of coded it where I see a positive return, I coded 1, negative return is 0. And so the number of positive returns here, I find it to be 170. So keep in mind that the number of positive returns, if I call it a random variable x, would follow the binomial distribution because it's either we observe a positive return or not. And so the distribution of the number of positive outcomes would follow the binomial distribution and if I calculate the proportion of positive of positive returns I find it to be 0.62 or 62 percent so this sample proportion p hat is the number of successes x which is 170 divided by the number of trials n which actually is the sample size of 275 so again, this point 0.62 is a point estimate, and these point estimates are used to estimate the underlying population parameters that you see here. Continuing with the lecture, another way of finding an estimate of the population parameter is to use interval estimation. An interval estimate, as I note here, is a range of values used as an estimate of a population parameter. So for example, rather than say that the, um, that the sample estimate is say 0.53 for the population mean, one could say this, the population mean um, lies within the interval, say for example 0.13% to 0.91%. And so, in essence, you've given an interval estimate, an interval estimation, within which you believe the true population mean, which we cannot observe, lies. 
Now though, statistically, these interval estimates are based on a defined probability, or if you like in this case, confidence level. Well, what do we mean by that? Well, remember, for a normally distributed random variable, which is so described by this frequency polygon, the total area under the curve is equal to 1. And so if, for example, we wish to calculate the 95% confidence interval for a given population parameter such as the mean, mu right here, then we're going to be looking at the area that comprises 0.95, which one half of it would be 0.475 as I show here, and the other half would be 0.475. To then find the limits, we're going to say, well, what would, what's the z value at this point right here, as well as on this point, which of course would be the same value because the z value would measure the distance from the mean to this point. So what we're going to do is to go to the z table and look up the z value that corresponds to an area of 0.475. And here it is. So right here on this Z table, remember that the Z values are on the margin right here from top to bottom and from top left to right left. The probability values are within the table and they range from 0 all the way to approximately 0.5. So for an area or probability of 0.475, you just look inside the table and the numbers are sequential. So 0.475 is this number right here. And the z value corresponding to it would be 1.96. So 1.96 is the z value corresponding to an area of 0.475. And that's what you find right here and right here. So these are going to be the z values with which to eventually calculate the lower limits on this left side and the upper limits on this right side of the confidence interval. In general, there are three conventional confidence levels used in statistical applications. They are 90% whose z value is 1.645, 95% whose z value as we've just shown is 1.96, and 99% whose z value is 2.576. And again, to find the z value for a 90% confidence level, you would remember that 0.9, one half of it, would be 0.45. And so you would have to go to the z table and look up the z value corresponding to an area of 0.45. And it's somewhere right here. And that z value would be 1.6. 4 or 1.65 or you can interpolate between these two and find it to be 1.645 and that's what you find right here. So in the same way you can also find the z value of 2.576 for 99% confidence level. Now though since I've summarized these major confidence levels here and their corresponding z values you really need not go back to the z table for the values any longer for all assignments and even for practical purposes. So the first thing we're going to do here is to then show an example of how to calculate the confidence interval uh, for the population mean mu in this first case where sigma, the population standard deviation, is known. 